don't understand the value of it. And also some of the challenges in these communities that I have experienced um, with my work is that a lot of organizations have been going into these communities, making promises that they don't keep to. So farmers or just women or people in rural areas are not open anymore because there is no trust. Mm. So we need to also build trust because there are no contracts in these communities. Mm. When you say you're coming to pick a bag of rice or a bag of fonio, you should keep to your word. Mm. So they are not open anymore to collaborate. Mm. When they see you, they just think about cashing out now. They are not thinking long term. So even when you're bringing this project, you're telling them that, oh, we are building something. We are trying to create a space where you can scale and equip you the right tools. They don't believe it. They just want to cash out today. So they're not thinking long term. Ghana, our number one Staple food is maize. But what is happening today? And then, a bro kotoko bakun is over a thousand Ghana cities. Not long ago, a bro kotoko bakun was around 250 Ghana cities. But this year, no, it drew over a thousand Ghana cities. So when we are talking about food security in Ghana contest, are we on the verge of entering or moving out of the, the dispensation that we can call ourselves secured nation? No. The answer is no. Because as we speak today, there are several silos. Silos, bebre. Ah, Kwame Nkuma, ACCA. Yeah. Oh, yes. Kwame Nkuma built a lot of silos. And the silos, you know, are yet white elephants. It is what nobody is using it. Now, this planting for food and jobs, yeah, we have a call website. Uh, they have said, oh, we, our yields increased from 2019, uh, sorry, 2017, and uh, it went down in 2018, and it has never gone up again. You know why? We are not doing politics. This page, we don't do politics. The reason that that happened was that in 2016, the government then had come out with free fertilizer supply. But in 2017, instead of continuing with, in conjunction with the planting for food and just Oma Yenisa, and Afri Oma, are they actually not for sale? Afri Oma Tro for sale. Me a Jifa Miska. And some of us were, were, were farming, farming at that time, and we paid, we paid 69 cities for a bag of a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a fertilizer. Yes. But you see, what we want to understand in 2022, April, Government came out with a policy and placed a ban on the export of soya beans. Time last year, government restricted export bans of soya beans and maize from Ghana. I don't know if that ban is still in place, but that story was April 2022. The government then restricted the export of soya beans and maize from the country. This was announced by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to ensure food security and increase local poultry and livestock production. Protectionism. We don't know if that ban is still on, but at the time, the press secretary of the ministry, Issa Alassan, told City News that over the past couple of years, since the advent of COVID, we had had to endure a lot of challenges. So in order to ensure that the local demand is met, there was the need to promulgate a law to ensure that any individual that wants to export soya beans from this country had to come for a permit. Whether they are able to police the exports is a different question, but that is there. So we need to put that on record. Now, go and ask poultry farmers the challenges they are going through. Poultry farmers, the whole of the country, are challenged with insufficient supply of soya beans. Yes. They are having a high level of insufficiency in terms of supply. So when you go to the, the poultry subsector within the agriculture value chain, it is going down. What can we do as a nation? Haven't mentioned the five pillars, uh, the four uh, you know, enablers of the food security. Now let's go to the planting for food and jobs. This is what they said. There are five pillars to the, the project. One, provisions of subsidies at half price. Subsidize fertilizers at half price. E-agriculture. Market opportunities and free extension services. Yeah, truthful. If all these things were implemented very well, Minjini said, we'll come and talk about food security here. 
Because indeed, the project is giving seats at half price. In two koto a bro, upe so do a bro, next current price in your 21 cities are ube to assign 10 cities, 50 pesos. Because of the planting for food and jobs, it will be to half. So up a pesticide, and I say, a friend, be be up so do gugu, or no man or so. If it is 100 cities, you pay 50 Ghana cities. But it didn't live up to expectation. And that is why we are finding ourselves in such a quagmire. So, Yaka say, what is the solution? What is the solution? We need to start thinking. We should start thinking ahead because if there is a global prediction of food security crisis, then it suffice to say that we have to start working against time now. We have to start working against anything that will bring the security of our food system in the agriculture sub-sector now. We don't have time. We have to start thinking. Let's think ahead of time. Please, policymakers, Ministry of Agriculture, CC, uh, uh, Mr. Brian Champon. Some people were calling him Dr. Brian. I don't know whether he, he is Dr. Brian or Mr. Brian Champon. But please, you you come, you are you are a member of Parliament for Abetifi. Your area is indeed a forest zone where food growing should have been, should be one of the greatest things you should be doing. You see, but what we want you to do is this. Could you please follow up the planting for food and jobs that Dr. Afriya Koto couldn't do? Can you revive the policy? Because from where we are, we don't want any political color in terms of our agriculture subsector. No, we don't want it. We don't want it. It's hard time we stop politicizing our agriculture subsector. A comba. A common enim endis at a day, and enim MPP at a day, not called CPP at a day. We are all Ghanaians, or say we need to find solution to food security and the sufficiency of food for every Ghanaian at all times. And that is what we are, we on the spotlight are advocating for. Now, let's be nationalistic. The planting for food and job is a good program trying to detach politics out of this. Let's detach politics out of this. Whichever government that comes, the enablers, the support to make sure that this thing works. Because, yes, see, the prediction is saying that by December, we will talk about more ADD Christmas. We will talk about more ADD Christmas. We And you know, we will come back to you. So please, and please again, Government set up, let your agricultural subsector work. You see the operation feed yourself that our champion brought. It was a cardinal principle with which the P uh, planting for food and jobs wanted to you know ride on. But I hear you because the policy is saying that we should be planting out behind our back doors and what have you we, tomatoes, Ghana, tomatoes, we you mukrano to go a bit free. This is what we, People must be encouraged to do it. If you don't encourage people, they will not do it. Let's try to bridge the gap, check the high cost of the input. So to provide a context of what I will be sharing in this discussion, uh, we at Tegas, we are working with smallholder farmer, uh, farmers in Ghana, around 31,000 of them, and we are doing uh, 1,000 acres of regenerative agriculture. So, um, as somebody um, working with smallholder farmers, the biggest challenge is the high input cost of, of, uh, of agricultural production, um, exacerbated by the war, and most of all, climate change. Mm. Sarah, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish there was one issue. <laughs> I think the, the thing that makes our food systems, whether actually in Africa or anywhere else in the world, um, sort of what they are is that they're deeply complex and they're very intertwined. And so the, the different sort of points that you made, which is debt, climate, geopolitical tensions, and then just the lack of sort of scale um, and, and sort of uh, productivity gap that exists on the continent. I mean, they're all... Agriculture inputs more than the do. Let's support the farmers, yeah? Or more input producers, those who bring in the inputs, eh? they also know that this is where they also get their money. They are business people. 
When so a, 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 a farmer comes to buy a, a, a bro, so a cocodia. Also, also, you fast one. So if government do not have to come in with some price regulatory control, I will say, we'll talk input to her at the same price everywhere. It's going to be a problem. Let's check on the access roads. Roads. Watch this video. Ah, a queer for a while. I'm going to get it to you now. Hey, I'm going to get it. 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 By your own McDonald, by your a bit of the whole Ghana, am I? Because a stress or a reform, or more do by your can Ghana North region, on by your double bucket, see a case of papa, 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 a team of mini, a wheel queen in my two way. Mohaw, Ewaha, any dear him, how fine a quaint, a quaint bar, soon your top head, not no by an idea. I can with him. Eti ni njia hapa pro. Eti ni njia hapa dawa na pro. Ah, nchi. Sisi sisi nchi. E muabe pa umu na muo kwa pui. Eni yake sna ba sisi umeti mwa boi ya kwa ya kwa ya. Eni adro ya dibo spring so angamu tete suka krama ya. Uh huh. Ah, anesha tini ya boi. Ah, lawe fwo. Amu wa efrisere. Dimu hara nse abano. Amu bade sisi mu kwa njia mduko mfu mno. Enye. Eni na adro ya dibo spring ni sano ni boi ya den. Nchi ama sisi ya hunchira kwa ya den. Aba moso. Isi kesi sababu sisi baide gua sisi kwa ano muinya kwa yamba fasi amani bebe koro. Isi kuna mwe wewe baide ba bebe koro kwa. Aha, inti ya fasi zemi ni ya DC wote buateni. Yase iya uchami ya nim asemka wasana na usumuwa la wefu eje kuyafu kesi ya omu wote buateni wenye lawyer ndi apia kubi mkuu nchini tuensi ha. These people have grown a lot of yam. Naso. Amu bompa ya se mensi yonto, because yonto yonto ha, amu ntu mi mfa, ya mne enfe mfuro, enfe mfi dis in talent, and bring it to Akra in Kumasi. And according to the amu se, they can grow to feed the whole nation for the whole year. Inti if Ghana for, ya he ready se, ya pesi ye di ya, ye di ya niya ye ya, e bro, ye di ya bro sa, ye di ya banchi sa, ye di ya bayre sa, ye mkong, we are not going to import anything. But as it is today, we are important. And Chibia said, Bokina Faso, troubles and bar. One say, you say, you did tomatoes if you hover. Niger, you did onion if you hover. Why? Ghana. With all these available lands. And then, and a comedy. Let's continue. Let's continue. Things are not under control. Let's develop our own homegrown policies. Homegrown policies for agriculture is very paramount. In here, the better or the early we do this, the better for the nation. Homegrown policies, planting for food and jobs, if it is not adopted from anywhere and it is a homegrown kind of an idea, let's try to implement it. We need the government that has balls to say, this is what we want to do as a nation and we are doing it. Please, we have to. We have to. Let's support farmers. Let's help them increase their production growth. The yields must be pro increased. The land tenure system. Please, allow the farmers, give them opportunities to cultivate more on these lands that are bare. They are there. Nobody is doing anything on it. So, the Ministry of Lands, please, let the chiefs give opportunities and access to farmers who want to upscale their production. It will help the nation. The more we grow, the more we move out of challenges in terms of food security. Why are we still, why are we not seeing then uh, the food insecurity crisis improve, you know, if, if these things are being implemented? I mean, what is it that, that is not being focused on at this point in time? Jump in. So, um, these practices are small scale. So um, I want to um, uh, summarize everything. When you do, you, uh, Fatma is saying that we need to enable the markets, but also on the other side of the coin is the production. But in this ecosystem are enablers. Enablers such as government policy, such as private uh, investors believing uh, in, in food security. So I think these um, stakeholders need to work together mm. to, to uh, 
to scale it up in the next few years. This is what will help the nation. We need to stop the issues of post-harvest losses, like the video I showed you. We should build silos. Let's build silos. Epamocho, moon sisi silos. Moon sisi silos, baby. Ghana, say, you need baby, I'm going to do your name now. This is able to me the silos, akasia, 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 food storage system. You know, you see what? It will help us. I buy the, the, I don't know whether this policy started in the previous government, where national service personnel are deployed into agricultural lands, government lands for agric and what have you. It's a good development. Let's consolidate it. Let's give this young uh, uh, service personnel access to lands immediately. They have moved on after a year of service to the nation. So that they can also grow, they come and add it to the food basket of our nation. This will help us. So this is our future. We will we'll end very soon. You make sure that you don't move out. We are saying that let's replicate what Kwame Nkoma started. Mm? Let's continue to train our farmers to know the value of what they are doing and to increase their yields. It's so, so important. We as people, you know, and um, one thing, for example, like the grains, I've been talking about a lot, which I believe is very sustainable. Things like phony and millet is drought resistant. Hmm. You know, you grow it within 8 to 12 weeks, we can harvest. But farmers are not growing enough. They are growing for sustenance for themselves hmm. because it's very tedious to produce. You, it's easy to grow, but when it comes to processing, because some of these grains are so tiny, there's not enough mechanization. Hmm. So they don't have the tools to actually grow more of this food. So mechanization is very important. Training, equipping these farmers with the right tools. Make sure they can place value also, because farmers also need to understand the value of what they are growing. And that's, the only, that's one way to scale. If they understand the value, they can ask for a fair price. Hmm. And most of the times, they just go to eat. So you go down there, you give them a peanut, they're also in a, very, in, in a hurry to just collect it mm. because they don't understand the value of it. And also, some of the challenges in these communities that I have experienced um, with my work is that a lot of organizations have been going into these communities, making promises that they don't keep to. So farmers or just women or people in rural areas are not open anymore because there is no trust. So we need to also build trust because there are no contracts in these communities. Mm. When you say you're coming to pick a bag of rice or a bag of phonio, you should keep to your word. Mm. So they are not open anymore to collaborate. Mm. When they see you, they just think about cashing out now. They are not thinking long term. So even when you're bringing this project, you're telling them that, oh, we are building something. We are trying to create a space where you can scale and equip you the right tools. They don't believe it. They just want to cash out today. So they're not thinking long term. Let's enlarge the marketing opportunity. Indeed, the African continental free trade area, ah, Abey, eh, yeah. if you don't have for sufficiency, how do you export? So we, when we are able to upscale all the farming inputs and silos and everything now, you will be brain. We can continue joining up the after African continental free trade area. Me it's near the producing eco countries are or here in Norma. We have the headquarters in Ghana. Let's take advantage of that and go into the international community, grow to satisfy Ghana and then take the rest to the international community. Let's adopt smart climate agricultural practices. So, um, what we have been doing is helping the farmers to adopt um, climate smart agriculture to make them, um, to give them easy access to, to finance, uh, providing them high quality inputs that would um, um, improve their crop yields, um, help them adopt uh, climate resilience strategies in, in production. So um, by the aid of, of technology, so um, we um, at Tegas, we are implementing, um, we are creating our own large uh, language machine um, of a QA bot that helps uh, and ask uh, questions using our frontline agents in the farm. And we are using this um, uh, large language machine to develop solutions to prompt um, early warning systems for our farmers. We are also um, uh, encouraging farmers to uh, um, adopt uh, regenerative agriculture 
which is a set of farming practices that um, focuses on restoring and improving soil health, biodiversity and ecosystem functions. We believe that regenerative agriculture is the solution, is a viable solution in the continent because most of the African smallholder farmers have been doing it. Um, practices such as crop rotation and intercropping and in uh, a case study in Burkina Faso, um, they call it Zai technique, where the farmers have been digging holes to, um, to store rainwater, to capture rainwater, and it has tremendously uh, improved the vegetation cover of the land, uh, increased their crop yields, and at the same time sequestering carbon in the atmosphere. Smart climate, because currently the climate change challenges in Ghana, hey, it cannot be overemphasized though. These are some of the, the, you know, the characteristics of the climate change. These are some of the characteristics. And we need to adopt smart, uh, you know, uh, uh, climate actions in terms of our agriculture system. Finally, 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 let's create enablers. Government should be deliberate with the policy. Government create the enabling environment for young people to enjoy agriculture. Government, please, create the enabling environment for young people to go into agriculture. It will help us. Grace, the question we are asking this morning <laughs> is, what is Ghana's readiness? The story on Bloomberg this morning is a global story. I'm just going to read it quickly. Then we'll, 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 we'll narrow it down some local issues. But, and I'm going to read it again. I read parts of it on the newspaper review. Mounting concerns over tighter global supply are amplifying risk of a fresh wave of trade protectionism as governments look to ensure ample food reserves, right? The return of the El Nino weather pattern, which could dry up water-dependent rice crops in Asia, is exacerbating those fears. Rice is more valuable commodity than before El Nino started up and Russia escalated its attacks on Ukraine's wheat and corn exports, according to Peter Timmer, professor emeritus at Harvard University, who studied food security for decades. Prices could climb a further $100 a ton in 6 to 12 months. This is his warning. Prices of rice could climb a further $100 in the next 6 to 12 months. Now, the big question is whether the price rise will be gradual, giving consumers time to adjust without panic, or whether there will be a rapid spike to $1,000 a ton or higher according to Trema, who worked with Asian government on their recent policy response, oh, sorry, on their policy response during the 2008 food crisis. That was when rice soared above those levels after export bans by major producers, notably India and Vietnam. Young people can easily go and they will enjoy doing it because there is an outgrower system. Then the system continues. You get your money. This is what we are talking about. The ecosystem of agriculture is very wide. The value chain is so, so wide. You can talk about farmers, you can talk about input supplies, the outsourcers, the buyers, the transporters, land ownership, extension services, research, and what have you. It's very big value chain. Government should come in and source all these. Government have opportunity with the financial institutions so that they can also have give loans to farmers. They can continue to grow more. The more we grow, the more we will not get hungry. In America, the whole world, it is it is mentioned that America now a crowa wokoswa a come and do da. Africa we can't do because we don't have the money. They have the money, but if we have the land, let's try to do it. Eh? Now, as I'm bringing my message to an end, this is what I want to say: with government deliberate policies. The private sector will support with government deliberate policies african other, other african countries will also replicate the same thing and africa indeed will be the the food basket of the world so this is your spotlight i know i have provoked you so much write your comments on the comment section let us hear your thoughts this is an agriculture you know feature that we did and we know you have loved it like the video share it to your compatriots and let's hear from you again another time. Bye-bye.